Hi. I'm going to start up with the update on my Epstein-Barr, chronic active Epstein-Barr disease. Um, yesterday, I was feeling really bad, as bad as it gets, um, where I could barely do anything. The only thing I did all day was prepare um, some food. That was it. And I want to say that uh, this support group that I have on Facebook is so helpful. There is no doctor out there that is really doing anything for this. Uh, we have almost 10,000 people worldwide on this face group, Facebook group, and everybody's trying to figure it out. We're all helping each other figure it out. You know, everybody's taking supplements, trying to eat good, doing whatever they can. We share what works. We share what doesn't work. And doctors are not working <laughs> for us at all. Uh, only thing recommended is stem cells, which is very expensive, and most people can't afford it because insurance doesn't pay. That's the big farm you know, the big pharma um, opposition to anything natural. So um, I started on steroids, which uh, my doctor gives me steroids, and it's up to me because I know my condition and all, and he told me I could take them once a month, uh, five days once a month, and that wouldn't hurt me. However, since I don't like pharmaceutical drugs, I try to avoid them. I only take them when I really feel like I need to, and I was feeling inflammation going on with my TMJ. It was starting to get worse, and I was feeling a little bit of inflammation in my hip, which could be a signal of my sciatica acting up again, which usually happens every winter, even in Florida. Um, only in Florida, because it's only been a couple times um, here. Once in Georgia, I had it. Um, Anyway, I, I started on the prednisone the other day. The first day I felt good. If you ever took steroids, you know they usually make you feel pretty good. Uh, first day I felt good. Second day I felt bad. And third day was yesterday, and I was like really bad. I mean, I felt like I was dying. Um, that's what happens when it gets really bad. It's just that the fatigue is so extreme not it's not normal fatigue it's so extreme in every inch of your body including your brain your eyes everything that you feel like um you can't hardly move so uh, i'm going to share with you what i posted on this support group because they've been so good and helpful it's just so amazing and wonderful there is not one foundation out there for epstein-barr disease and there should be Nobody cares about it. Nobody's looking at it because they just figure it's a hopeless disease. There's no help for it except stem cells, and most people can't afford it. And Big Pharma won't pay, won't is working against it, lobbying against stem cells because <laughs> it's not a drug. It's totally natural, right? Also, there is the um, the issue about abortions because stem cells are most readily available from aborted fetuses. However, the ones I got were from um, live natural births, um, placenta donated from birth mothers. And that's the way I prefer to go. Um, however, you know, some people feel like, um, I mean, talking about Christians, people or whoever that really cares about, you know, um, doesn't feel like abortions uh, should be used for anything. Um, some of them, you know, they they have the argument that they can, um, it's better to make some use, some good use, healing. I mean, many people can be healed possibly from one aborted fetus. Um, should never, ever, ever be a reason for an abortion. But if the abortion is going to happen anyway, or happened anyway, is it wrong? I'm not saying I don't know if it's right or wrong. In fact, it's something I've been praying about because I need more stem cells. It's cheaper in Mexico, but 
I'm not sure they if they're using the aborted fetuses or not. I would have to find that out because I, I'm not sure about the ethics on that. I've been praying about it. I haven't felt an answer from God on that. So I'm going to read you just real quick in case for these people, because there are some people out here um, watching because I have this disease. Um, and I'm going to tell you what I wrote. And for everybody who cares for me, who knows me, cares for me, so you can maybe understand a little bit of what we go through. This is how I felt yesterday. However, today, last night, I slept a solid 11 hours, and I told you previously that um, I'm a legal cannabis user in Florida, and um, the THC works wonders, helps you sleep like a baby. And still, usually I only sleep six to eight hours, but last night I slept 11 hours. I woke up feeling good today. Not, not my best, but a whole lot better. I was able to take a walk down by the river and I installed my toilet seat that has been sitting around here for about three months that I bought and I did not get around to doing it until today. So that was a big deal for me. So here we go. This is what I wrote on this uh, support group on Facebook yesterday. I get ready to do dishes. Sink is full of warm and soapy. I stand and stare. My mind is blank. A box is delivered. It sits unopened for days. I buy groceries. Only the perishable get put in the fridge. Everything else waits for tomorrow or the next day. I think of cleaning something for a week or more until I make it a priority for that day. I lay in bed awake, barely thinking. Everything is slow motion. This is living alone with chronic active Epstein-Barr virus. Who can relate? Well, I got 89 relating almost immediately and 60 replies. Thank God. It's my lifeline, this Facebook support group. So I will move on to my story now, and um, thank you for caring. Okay, so um, I got some pictures for you today that I found pulled out. Okay, if you've been following, you might appreciate them. Okay, this is that um, the nice house we lived in in San Diego. Okay, here's me and Lauren. Now, going back to when we were traveling out here, this was at the Grand Canyon, okay? Um, when we camped at the Grand Canyon, there's Lauren in her high chair, and there's Layla. I wanted to show you Layla what she looks like. Um, like I say, we always said she was German Shepherd. I think she might have a little mix in her, but sweet, wonderful dog. Okay. And she's been in my story. And here is um, who I also mentioned, Casper, our cat, if you could see. Um, that cat was left at the, when we moved to the trailer. Okay. The single wide trailer out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, there's Casper. She, we inherited her. She was already living there. And um, if you, you could see, there's the windmill. We lived on 40 acres. There was the windmill, and the, the well was right there. You can't tell, but that's where we got our water from. Okay, and this is Barrett Valley where we lived. I told you we lived in the middle of nowhere. Well, this is where we lived. Okay. Middle of nowhere. And all weeds and dried up brush. And lots of big boulders. Okay, there's me and Lauren climbing up the boulders on the mountain. We did a lot of mountain climbing. 
And here is the dirt road right where we right up right outside our gate where we lived and that was after all the weeds burned down and by the way the pepper trees I told you the beautiful pepper trees in front of our, our little um, patio had all burned they grew back they grew back just as pretty as ever okay so here is if you could see I know there's a little glare there. That's our trailer. That little structure there in the middle. That's where we lived. 10 by 40 foot trailer. And here's Bob and Lauren <laughs> right outside our house right outside our little fence. That was the way we were living on the ranch. Okay, so one day, 1979, inside, I'm inside the trailer, and Bob was working on the um, stained glass in the barn every day, and I'm in this trailer with Lauren, and all of a sudden, everything started shaking, right? Earthquake. Well, now, living in San Diego, did I show you? I think I missed showing you the nice house. Did I show you the nice house we lived in? Yeah, I did. Okay, sorry. Um, living in San Diego, from the beginning, there's always tremors in California. Always, I mean, always like... Gee, what is that? Okay. Always tremors. Um, when I say always, I mean like maybe every couple of weeks or something. It was common to feel um, a little bit of shaking. Uh, right now, I have a. There's a. I live near the train tracks. It's very similar to when the a train goes by close by and if you could feel the um, vibrations and the ground a little bit and things shaking just a, a little bit, um, felt those from the beginning when we moved to San Diego. But this time in the trailer, I mean, all of a sudden violent shaking, really big shaking like this, you know, and I mean, thought the trailer was gonna flip, grabbed Lauren, ran outside, and um, it was scary. Doesn't last long though. Uh, and also uh, a earthquake, a, a strong earthquake, interesting. It sounds just like thunder, but the thunder's coming underground instead of in, from the sky. So you hear the thunder, you feel the shaking, uh, and this one was strong. And um, anyway, we didn't have any damage. It was a 5.8 earthquake in El Centro, Imperial Valley, which was 80 miles east of where we lived. So that was the strongest earthquake that I ever experienced. And there was many more earthquakes and one other that was pretty strong. I'll tell you about later when we get there in, that, in my story. Um, we lived out there also, um, one of the first things we learned living out on the ranch was about rattlesnakes, because they are all over the place, right? When you go, well, they're just all over, and that's the reason that you keep the weeds cut down uh, close by your house and all. And um, we learn what they look like. They have big heads, bigger than the bodies, and they have rattles. And there's different ones, a lot of diamondbacks out there and sidewinders. We learned what they look like. We learned what their trails look like on the dirt road. And we, um, there was tarantulas around and Bob caught one and he made a little aquarium for it. And he would buy um, crickets to feed Titus. We, we named it Titus. And he, I, I wouldn't touch it. I wasn't scared of it. Wouldn't touch it though, but he would handle it. 
I think Lauren petted it. Um, later, we got another one. We, after a while, uh, Bob let Titus go. And then after a while, we caught another one, a different one. Now, I'm not sure. I guess it was a different breed, much bigger. Titus was big. Um, okay, I'll say this. Titus was as big as the palm of my hand here. Minerva was as big as my whole hand. Yeah, and we had Minerva for a while later. Um, okay, coyotes. There was coyotes every night running around. And you could hear them during the night. Uh, they make the most eerie sound. I mean, for one thing, they kind of howl sometimes. But when they're, I don't know when, but sometimes they make this sound like they're laughing. It's really eerie, um, like, a, like a bunch of people, it sounds like laughing, but you know they're coyotes, and they're yipping and, and howling and laughing. I guess it's when they, they kill something, I don't know. But one day, um, our dog, who looks similar to coyotes, she was actually a little bigger than most of them. But uh, one day she disappeared. We were worried because she didn't come home all night. And then I think I think she was gone a couple days, two or three days. And then our neighbor told us that he saw a bunch of coyotes running the night before. And she said one of them had a red collar on. <laughs> On the neck. <laughs> so we knew that was Layla running with the pack. But she came back after a few days, and after that we were more careful about, you know, calling her in before it got dark and keeping her inside our little fence around our trailer. So also, my cousin, um, I have a cousin who my mother's um, sister also Japanese, had married an uh, American Navy guy, and they ended up living in Florida, um, on the west coast of Florida. And my mom and my brother went to visit them when I was a teenager, and I could have went, I suppose. I don't remember exactly why I didn't go, but I didn't go for some reason. Wish I had at that time, but... Um, the, her, she has... So my mom's sister has had a, a son and a daughter, my, my only cousins, and I never met them. But my cousin Rich, he was um, a naval officer and he got stationed in San Diego. So he looked me up and he uh, would come and he came to visit me with his wife who was pregnant and his, her, the little girl that was her little girl. And so that was real nice. So he came out all the way out there, 40 miles or more from the Navy base, it was probably 50 miles. Um, and he, he came, they would come out to visit and we went to visit them a couple times. And uh, he was a few years younger than me, not too much, maybe five years younger than me. But um, we all got along well. He and Bob got along well. I liked his wife and every, you know, it was all really nice. That was a blessing to have them there. Finally meet my cousin. And let's see the time here. We still have some time, 19 minutes. But I'm just going to make a mention, okay, about um, church because that was part of my life, right? So we're still going to Broadway Church in San Diego, right downtown San Diego, um, which was 40 miles. We're driving there every Saturday on Sabbath because they were, we were Seventh-day Adventists who keep the Jewish Sabbath. Very interesting mix of um, Jewish and Christian Seventh-day Adventists. Anyway, um, sundown, sundown Friday to sundown Saturday, we were very care careful to keep that special apart from the world and all that. So, um, 
we were still going down there. Now there was a little church right down the road, just a couple couple miles, four miles or something down the road uh, in Dulzura, the little country town we were in. But the church had a very old pastor. Well, I say very old. He's probably 60. He might have even been in his 50s, but he seemed very old to me and very um, boring and spoke in a monotone. You know, nice people, but it was, you know, the city church was much more appealing to us. And so we kept going. Then we started going to El Cajon Church. We looked at La Mesa Church and Chula Vista Church, which were closer. We decided we liked El Cajon Church pretty good, and we got very good friends with the pastor there. He was a super cool guy. He had the big full beard, even bigger than Bob's, and um, bushy hair and a wife and two kids, boy and girl. But he had climbed Mount Everest, and he was a really super cool guy. But we liked him a lot and got friends with him and his family. Um, but we were still friends with the, the pastor, um, Boney, from San Diego Church. And that's all for now. Used up my time. Hope to see you next time. And if you haven't seen the past, I hope you look at the past. Take care. God bless.